for joining us today on this edition of Business Daily. I'm Itiun in Seoul. Before we get started, let's first get a quick check of today's highlights. Overseas sales of Korea's top 30 business groups dropped last year due to slowing demand in major markets amid low oil prices and a prolonged global economic slowdown. With less than a day to go until people in Britain head to the polls to vote on whether to leave or stay in the European Union, we take a look at what impact the outcome of Thursday's Brexit referendum might have on the Korean economy. But first, Korea's top central banker has warned that economic uncertainties are growing both in and outside the country. Leading a meeting with other economists on Wednesday, Bank of Korea Governor Lee joo cited Britain's EU referendum and a possible rate hike in the U.S. as unpredictable variables. Within the Korean economy, he noted the government-led corporate restructuring drive that has already been pushing up unemployment in regions where shipyards are concentrated. The restructuring drive focuses on the country's struggling shipping and shipbuilding industries. Now, the governor E added that the recent cut in Korea's key rate, coupled with widely expected fiscal support in the second half, could help to cushion the potential impact, but the effects will require closer monitoring. Alarm bells are ringing for Korea's export-dependent economy as the majority of Korea's top 30 business groups saw their overseas sales drop sharply last year compared to the previous year. Our Kim Min-ji has this report. The overseas sales of Korea's top 30 business groups are falling at a faster pace than that of their domestic sales. Conglomerate Tracker CEO Score says combined sales of both home and abroad of over 1,000 business units of 30 conglomerates sat at over 1 trillion U.S. dollars in 2015, down 6.3 percent from the year before. Of the figure, overseas sales came to about $500 billion, down 7.4 percent on year, while local sales fell 5.2 percent to roughly $560 billion. 20 conglomerates saw their overseas sales dip. The decline comes on the back of a slowdown in the global economy, a prolonged slump in global oil prices and oversupply from China. s o i l the nation's third largest oil refiner, posted the biggest decline in overseas sales, followed by Hyosung and Lotte. Among the top four conglomerates, Hyundai Motor was the only to post positive growth, while Samsung, SK and LG all recorded losses. Kim m i n j i Business Daily. Global inflows of foreign direct investment have reached their highest level since the 2008 global financial crisis. According to the annual World Investment Report by the UN Conference on Trade and Development, foreign direct investment rose 38 percent last year from the year before to 1.8 trillion U.S. dollars. Asia was the number one destination, followed by Europe and North America. Mergers and acquisitions were the key drivers behind the increase, jumping 66 percent on year. But the report added that inflows will likely drop by 10 to 15 percent this year due to growing economic uncertainties and slowing trade worldwide. Leave or remain? It's a simple question that will shape the future of Britain and possibly the European Union as a whole. Brits will head to the polls in just about 24 hours from now to decide whether the UK stays in or withdraws from the EU. And the latest polls show that it could go either way. Our Hwang Ho-jun has more. It's a toss-up. Polls are showing that the Brexit battle is back in a deadlock, with intense personal attacks and conflicting facts muddying the increasingly heated debates. Europe's n a t s e n Social Research Center says the results of the referendum could still go either way, based on an average of six recent polls. British Prime Minister David Cameron implored citizens on Tuesday to vote to stay in the EU. It will just be you in that polling booth, just you taking a decision that will affect your future, your children's future, your grandchildren's future. Boris Johnson, the leader of the Leave campaign and the former mayor of London, said at a BBC moderated debate on the same day that the Remain side is woefully underestimating the UK. He got a hearty round of applause from supporters for saying that leaving could make June 23rd the UK's Independence Day. Polling stations in the UK will be open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Thursday local time. 
The vote counting will start immediately afterward, and the world will likely know whether Britain will stay in the EU or leave it by early Friday morning. Hong Wojun, Business Daily. And of course, investors around the world are keeping a close eye on the referendum, but how is it going to affect the Korean economy? For more on this, we're now joined by Arirang News Hwang Jie in the studio. Hi, Jihae. Hi, Jihae. So, Jihae, just overnight, the U.S. Fed Reserve Chair talked about negative implications of a Brexit. Right. And, of course, global institutions like the IMF had been calling mm -hmm. on Britain to stay in the European Union. So, we are talking about some major ramifications for global financial markets if Britain does exit the European Union. Absolutely, Jihae. And if Britain really leaves uh, the 28-nation regional bloc, it would trigger a flight to safer assets like the U.S dollar, Japanese yen, or even gold. And that is what we've already seen in global markets. And that's also what Fed Chair Janet Yellen mentioned as she expressed her concerns about the upcoming decision. She added that is why the Federal Reserve was cautious about raising interest rates now. Take a listen. One development that could shift investors' sentiment is the upcoming referendum in the United Kingdom. A UK vote to exit the European Union could have significant economic repercussions. Then how would this swing towards safer assets affect Korea? Well, Korea obviously does not hold a key currency. That's what we all know and is seen more as an emerging economy, especially when uh, an uncertainty like this arise. So analysts forecast a massive capital outflow from Korea if Britain decides to leave the EU, especially in the face of one or two more possible rate hikes by the U.S. Fed this year. There's about $31 billion worth of British investment in Korea's stock market. So if we see a Brexit, a huge chunk of that capital will flow back out to the UK. Now that $31 billion that he just mentioned takes up nearly 10% of the total foreign capital in Korea's securities market and stands at the second largest following the U.S. And we've already seen how local shares might react to the possible Brexit with Korea's benchmark cost be dropping for six straight days from the 9th to the 16th. The index slid to the 1,950 level from over the 2,000 mark, raising some $40 billion in market cap. The Kospi, however, did recover some losses earlier this week as Brexit woes waned following the death of Labour MP Joe Cox. The benchmark index today closed just above the 1,990 level today. So are we seeing any risks of a substantial global financial crisis like the one we saw back in 2008? Because that's obviously going to have a huge impact on Korea as well. Right, right. We are seeing such risks with even billionaire investor George Soros warning that a British vote to leave the EU would uh, plunge the sterling, British sterling, by over 20 percent against the U.S. dollar. Obviously, this will depend on the outcome, though. But analysts I spoke to do not think even with a Brexit it will be a likely scenario, although it might cause turmoil in the European and U.S. markets in the short term. Of course, they add the negative impacts on the Korean markets would also be short lived. But how about in terms of Korea's exports? Because the UK is Korea's 16th largest export market, right? Pr uh, pretty much. And uh, that's because Korea's exports, as you just mentioned, is the 16th largest. And also because it only takes up a mere 1.4%. Mm -hmm. So from a trading perspective, the impact is likely to be limited. Britain will also have a two-year negotiation period with the European Union about uh, their terms if the leave side wins and experts say the transitional period would act sort of as a grace period for korea that already has a free trade agreement with the eu and it would have to set new terms with the uk what is crucial though they say is for korea to cement a new deal within that period if Korea fails to secure a new free trade deal with the UK before the two-year negotiation period, there is the possibility of Korea's products losing price competitiveness because of import duties. 
And experts add that concluding those talks within the two years will not be an easy task, considering that uh, Britain leaving the EU is ultimately an event that will damage global economic confidence and investment. They say it would further hurt Korean exports, which have been plunging for almost a year and a half now. All right. There's no doubt that we'll all be keeping our eyes close on what of comes course. out of Britain on Friday. Thank you so much for coming in today, Jihye. Thanks for having me. It's been confirmed the Ministry of Health and Welfare will require tobacco manufacturers to include warning images and cigarette packs sold here in Korea by the end of the year. The ministry said on Wednesday it has completed the legislative work within the National Health Promotion Act and it has decided the graphic images warning of risks such as lung cancer, oral cancer and birth defects must cover at least 30 percent of the front of the packaging. Together with the warning text under it, the anti-smoking label will cover about half of the carton. With the adoption of the new rule to come into effect on December 23rd, Korea will join more than 80 countries worldwide requiring the pictorial warning labels. An anti-corruption bill was signed into law last year, placing a gift limit on Korea's public servants. After a grace period of a year and a half, it's finally set to take effect in a few months. But it's also raising concerns, as one forecast says the law could translate into $10 billion in law sales each year. Our Eunice Kim tells us more. It's called the Kim Young lan Law. Named after a former Supreme Court justice who'd initiated the drive, the act places limits on gifts acceptable by public servants such as lawmakers and teachers, as well as journalists. Under the law, those that accept cash gifts of more than 100,001 in socially acceptable family milestones like weddings and funerals or are treated to entertainment worth more than 50,001 could be looking at a criminal investigation. The controversial act has sparked concern within business circles who fear the coming impact to their bottom line. And a fresh report by Korea Economic Research Institute finds that that impact could add up to billions of dollars. By and large, the biggest hit in sales could come to the food sector at an estimated $7.3 billion per year, with the dining cap at 30,001, about 26 U.S. dollars per person. Adding in the gift and golf industries, the effect, the think tank says, could add up to $10 billion each year. With the law facing criticism that it's too restricting, the report also calculated how the blow could be softened by raising the dining limit. It says in the case that the cap is raised to 50,001, the estimated sales loss could be cut by some $4 billion. And if revised to 70,001 per person, the damage could be shaved down by $1.3 billion. The law comes into force in about three months on September 28th. And while the Economic Research Institute adds the indirect impact on the already glum consumer spending could be wider, others say the report overstates, as it does not take into consideration the possibility the new law won't raise down all illicit spending for influence. Eunice Kim, Business Daily. At a time when countries around the world are introducing various policies with hopes of seeing more people buy and drive electric vehicles, Korea seems to be going in the opposite direction. Our Lee Ju Young tells us more. Ever since buying an electric car two years ago, office worker Chung Sang-dong, who drives 30 kilometers for his commute every day, has been happy with his purchase. He says it's mostly because his EV has helped him slash costs for his car maintenance by about 70 percent. It's really fuel efficient compared to other cars, so it helps a lot financially. And on a global scale, those who prefer to drive these eco-friendly vehicles have increased exponentially over the years. According to the OECD, sales of EVs worldwide were just over 12,000 units as of 2010. 
But in just five years, that figure has increased almost 100-fold to 1.2 million units. The proportion of registered EVs by country has also been on an upward trend, with places like Norway and the Netherlands leading the pack with 23.3 and 9.7 percent, respectively. On the other hand, Korea lags far behind, with a mere 0.2 percent. Experts say this is largely due to the government's reduction in state subsidies, a backpedaling move considered a severe blow to the nation's electric car market. Drivers that once received roughly $13,000 for their green vehicle purchase now only get $10,000 due to a 20 percent reduction. The government is also set to cut financial support for EV chargers by about 35 percent to $3,500. What's more, drivers now have to pay to use public chargers, and the lack of charging stations in general are stopping consumers from buying eco-friendly models. The government's policies are either slowing down the purchase of EVs or sending people in the opposite direction. We need aggressive policies that encourage people to buy. In the midst of this, the government unveiled an initiative earlier this month that aims to replace 30 percent of its new cars with green vehicles by 2020. If this goal is realized, the number of eco-friendly cars in the country is set to reach roughly 550,000 units in the next five years. Lee Ju-young, Business Daily. And that wraps it up for today. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you right back here for your latest edition of Business Daily. Until then, goodbye.